Now the there are some issues when we use the condition. We might use this equal equal sign, and some sometimes we will use it for um, any kind of objects or any kind of data types. Let's say if you want to check whether a number equals to zero, you can use this one. But sometimes you want to check whether a string is the same with another string or not. In Java, the equal equal is not appropriate for determining if two objects have the same value. Let's see this one. If S1 equal equal S2. And if S1 and S2 refers to string, yeah, this is not appropriate. This one is only to check about the memory location. I do not I do not want to discuss what is memory location, but just want to say that this is not feasible or this is not possible for string. If S1 and S2 refer to string with identical sequence of characters, but store in different memory location, so this S1 and S2 will become false. So that's the reason that this equal equal does not work for string. When we are going to use string, yeah, we need to use equal. So to test the quality of objects of a class string, we need to use equals. For example, I want to check whether the S1 equals to S2. So there's a method dot equals, and then we put the string inside of the parenthesis. Or yeah, we can say that S2 dot equals S1. So I want to check vice versa. So that's the equality when we want to ignore a case. Do you know what is the meaning by ignore case? When we have case, it means hello and hello is different. Even though we know that those two are words about hello. This word contains one uppercase. We call it uppercase. So uppercase means big letter. B, C, D, E, F. Okay. The uppercase is mean it means it is the big letter. But we have also another lowercase. Lowercase is the small letter. A, B, C, D. Okay. Java is case sensitive. Many programming languages, they are also case sensitive. That's why hello with big eights is different with hello small eights. So whenever we have the equal, maybe we think that hello and hello are the same. The only difference is only the case. Yes, you can use what we call as the equal ignore case we will ignore the case so those two words will be the same so the equals and the equals ignore case it will be useful for string data type we need to uh, check the string whether it is a variable or it is the 
uh, string itself and we can put dot equals and then put the parenthesis of the other string or we can use equals ignore case and put what is the string inside the parameter the parenthesis now let's see i have another class conditional example here too conditional example zero two and I will make a new main method <clears throat> I will make a scanner now let's have a new way to make the scanner let's say input So I will make the system.scanner system.in and whenever you have this error you can just move your mouse and then show the java.util.scanner and the errors will disappear. Now I have one prompt system.out.printline input two strings. And I would like to have the first string, let's say this is word one, equals to the input dot next. So I just want to get one word. And then I have another string in the word two, input dot next. Okay. After I have the word one, I have word two. Now I would like to check. Okay. So let's see if word one equals equals word two. Is it possible or not? Okay. So we will check. We are going to prove it. System dot out dot green line. The two word. Let me just put this on. The two words are the same. Okay. Now I have another if. If word one and if I press the dot it will show all the possible methods for the string. We can see the contains, content equals, and with equals, and so on. Let's just use equal. And it automatically give you the parenthesis, and they want to recommend you. Maybe you want to compare the word one and word two. So I will just use this one. And then if it is correct, I will, I will do the print line. The two words are the same, but I'm going to use with the if, with this way, okay. I have put it into number two. Now I have another if. Let's say I have the word one again, and I'm going to use the equals ignore case. So I will again the two words are the same but it is number three okay so there are three conditions and i would like to check which one is working let me run input to string hello and i have another hello 
it will print number two and number three. What about number one? Yeah, as I mentioned to you, the equal equal sign does not work for three. This one, equal, equal is not appropriate for the string. Okay. And what happens if <clears throat> we use the equals? Okay, the equals, it works for the string to check whether the word one equals to the word two. And yeah, it shows the result. And what about the equals ignore case? It is also working. Okay. Now, if I have a new input, hello, with small h, and then I have hello, with big h. Then, only number three appears. Number one, yeah, it is false, the condition is false. Number two, the condition is also false. Why? Because this is small letter and this is big letter. That's why equals does not work. When you have ignore, equals ignore case, it means Java will ignore the big and small case. It will be the same. So if you check this one, Hello and hello. What will be the result? Number three will be printed. So they don't care about the case. That's what we call as the ignore case. Okay, this is about the string equality. Okay, there is a question for the BMI program. Can you change the input from using inches and pound to meter and kilogram? I think you already have the formula. Okay, you can try. So you have in the section two, I guess, uh, in the PMI 02. Okay, you have this one. Okay, so we have the PMI when the weight is in kilo and the height is in meter. So you can use that one. Okay. Try yourself, practice, so you can know what is the problem when there is an error for the example in the page 20 can you fix the issues okay can you fix the issues when we run this code it will be errors not not correctly errors but you will see all the results. So let me just choose this one. Let me make a new class. Example to the two. So you can fix this one with the import. Okay, so I will show you what percentage did you earn? So if I print 90, sorry, if I input 90, then you will see all. You got an A, you got B, you got C, you got D. So how can you improve this one? You could just put else, okay? That's correct. We put else, we put else, we put else, and we put else. If I print, 
again 90 then we have only one you got okay now we need to understand more about additional operators we call it logical operators this logical operators is a boolean operator boolean means we have only two conditions true or false true or false we call it the boolean and the boolean operators can be combined with some logical operators we have the exclamatory sign not keep you and this means not this two symbol means and this two symbol means or and this symbol that means exclusive or let's see if it is true when i have p and p is true if i put the exclamatory sign before p then it becomes false if the p is false and if i put this sign before p then it will become true so for example one is greater than two is it true or false one is not greater than two so it's, it will be false but i put this sign so it will be the negation not false it means true because this statement is false so we put this exclamatory sign it becomes true one is greater than zero it is true but because I put the exclamatory sign before, then it becomes false. In the truth table, let's say I have P1 and I have P2. If P1 false and the P2 false, with the operator N, the result will be false. So if both of them are false, then the result will be false. If one of them is true, one of them is true, it is still false. Okay, so this is based on the mathematics. And then if it is true and true, then the result will be true. This is for the operator n. Let's say three greater than two. Okay, this is true. And five is greater than five. So 5 is greater than equal to 5. This is true. This is true. Then the result is true. 3 greater than 2. Yes, it is true. 5 greater than 5. No. This is false. So we will get the result as false. Now we have another operator we call it or operator or is the two particle line one if one condition is true we will get the result is true if both of them false we will get the result false if both of them are true then we will get true let's see this one two greater than three is it true? False. 5 greater than 5? False. We use this operator or then the result is false. 3 greater than 2 is true. 5 greater than 5 is false. Because it is the OR operator, then we will get it as true. One of the condition is true.
exclusive or. What does it mean by this exclusive or? If both of false or both of true, then the result is false. Otherwise, it is true. P1 is false, P2 is false, then P1 hat P2, it will be false. P1 is true, P2 is true, P1 hat P2 is false. If one is true, then the question is true. Okay. Now I have an example. Let's assume it's is a variable and the value is 24 and the gender equal to five of uh, f or female okay x is greater than 34 true or false false because now the it is 24 so it is false Gender equals to female. Okay, this is true. Because one condition is true, then it is true. It is greater than 34. It is false. Gender equals to M. It is false. Then it is So can you give any other example? Do you have any example for this one in the real life? For example, if you visit restaurant so you can get discounts if you're using for example your phone provider let's say you use sk okay when you show that you are the member of sk you will get discounts but you cannot use sk and kt at the same time or the discount will be only for one number you cannot use with multiple number even though the other number is also working so i have my sk number i have my kt number but if both is true you cannot do it because we will accept only one so that is the exclusive order Let's see with an example. Let's make one more, one new class, conditional logical operator zero one. Yeah, you can create your own name for this class. Let me just copy and paste this. Now, I would like to teach you one new thing. If you check this one, double data type will have a number and it is ended with D. Why? So in some cases, you can indicate the real numbers with D or F at the end of the numbers. So if it is a double number, 
you will have a long values okay maybe with dot three four five zero 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 one so i can put d yeah so it will make it yeah i know that it is a number if you can see it is a kind of yeah three four five zero 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 one yeah it doesn't matter but with this kind of d it is just to show that it is a double number i want to check if number one is less than number two and the number one is less number three if the number one is less than number two and the number one is less than number three then the smallest number is number one okay if number three is greater than number two or number three is greater than number one number three is not the smallest okay so the d yeah can represent the double or you can if you want to use float for example number four yeah you can have uh, f like this one to indicate that this is a float number let's say if i want to print number four so you will get this number actually it's the same but if you don't put this one yeah it might give you the error message if you don't get this one this is okay Okay. If you want to print number three, you will get actually the same. In the case of float, yeah, we can we need to put the F to avoid some numbers that misinterpreted. So that's why I will recommend you to use double because double can be used as a decimal without giving the d if you use float you need to define the f in order to make it as a number okay in java we can do the conditional operator conditional operator means if i want to write the conditional in several lines i can make it in one line if x is greater than zero let me make y equals to one if it is not then let's make y equals to minus one it will be equivalent to this statement. Y will be y will be equal to some kind of condition. This one, we will check x is greater than zero, and then we will separate with the question mark. If the condition is true, we will print one. If the condition is not true or false, then we will print minus one. So we need to have the question mark and the column. Let's see another example. I want to see whether a number is an even number or an odd number. If the number can be divided with two, then it is an even number. If it is not, then it is an odd number. You can make with this conditional operator, but you can make it with one line. So I would like to know if this condition is true. If the condition is true, I will print the statement before the column. What is the statement before the column? This is number is even. If the condition is false, 
I will print the statement after the form. Okay. Now let's see. Conditional operator zero two. Okay, let me just copy and paste. I will just make a variable. Uh, I have several variable x equals to 50, and then I have y and z. If x is greater than zero, I want y equals to one. Else, I want y equals to minus one. So if x is not greater than zero, I can print one. With the same idea, I would like to make only one line. And I would like to print z. So z will be, first we will check the condition. x is greater than zero. If it is true, then I will assign one to z. If it is false, I will assign minus one to the variable z. If you run this, you will get one and one. So the result is the same. This statement is the same with this statement. Let's see another example. Conditional operator zero three. Let me just copy and paste. Uh, we have one error scanner, so you can just move your mouse and click. Now you want to check the max if the max is greater than 50 or not so i have a variable status and i have the variable max to indicate the score i will use the scanner to get the user input and then please enter your max so please enter any number between zero until 100. And their input will be in the variable marks. I will check if the marks is greater than 50, and the status will have this string, you are passed. If this is false, then I will have this string you are failed now if you run please enter your mark let's say i put 80 and the status is you are passed if you run again if you enter your mark 45 then you are failed so you make your conditional operators in one line so you do need to make if statement with multiple lines. Okay. Next, we are going to learn the other kind of alternative for conditional. The conditional alternative uh, instead of using if else if, there is an alternative to write the conditional statement using switch statement. We have the switch statement. Now let's see the switch statement. The switch statement is using the switch, and we need to declare 
for example, this is a variable. And let's say this is the variable with integer. And if the status equal to zero, compute taxes for single file. If the status equals to one, then we'll do this one. If the status equals to two, then you will do this one. If the status equal to three, you will do this one. If there is no indication about zero, one, two, or three, then you will print this. Okay. So the idea of the flowchart, like this one. We have the question. And if the status is zero, we will do this statement. After you do the statement, click. And then you will finish and go to the next statement. If this is false, so it is this the condition is true. If it is false, you will check another condition. And if it is true, you will go to this one. If it is false, you will go to the next condition. And so, so the condition false, you will check another condition. The condition false, you will check another condition. If the condition is true, you will go to this one. If the condition is true, you will go to this one. If your condition is true, you will go to this one. And the last part is we need to put break. So this is the expression. The switch expression must yield a value of character type, short, or integer type. The last time in i think in the previous powerpoint we learn several kind of data type we have character we have byte we have short we have integer here and it must be enclosed in parentheses so it will be in this parentheses the value the value one until the value n this is here value one value two until value n it must have the same data type as the value of the switch expression. So if it is integer, then this value should be also integer. If this one is a character, then this value should be character. If this value is a string, this should be string. So the data type should match. The resulting statement in the case, okay, so this one, the statement one, statement two, and the statement n are executed when the value in the case statement matches the value of the switch expression. So as I mentioned, if the value here is correct with the value in the switch expression, then we will do this statement. Note that the value one, value n are constant expression. So this one is constant, constant, constant. Meaning that they cannot contain variables in the expression such as one plus x. Yeah? So the value is constant. You cannot put any mathematical function or operators. The keyword brick here brick is optional, but it should be used at the end of its case in order to terminate the remainder of the switch statement. So it if it is at the end, yeah, you need to put the break statement. If the break statement is not present, then the next case statement will be executed. 
So let's see. Break. We have break. Then, yeah, you will finish the statement. And then after you put the break, it will go off. But if you have no break, after you do the statement two in the value two, you can do the statement n sequentially. And in the switch statement, we have the default case. The default means if all those values are not correct, then we will use this default. The default case, which is optional, can be used to perform action when none of the specified cases matches the switch expression. So if this one is false, this is false, this is false, then you will do the default. The case statements are executed in sequential order. So it will start from the top to the bottom. But the order of the cases, including the default case, does not matter. So if you want to make the value one in the at the end and the value n it is the first, yeah, it doesn't matter. However, it is good programming style to follow the logical sequence of the cases and place the default case at the end. So it is good to make it as a logical order. Maybe you start from one and two, three, four. So it is good to maintain that logical order. So let's see, for example, I have a switch okay. and suppose this variable is a character. Do you still remember character? Character is a single letter. You can use maybe A, B, C, or a number or even a symbol. So suppose CH is, is a character and the character is A. Now I would like to check case A, it means I would like to know if the CH is a character A or not. Because I already know the definition that CH is a, a then we will print CH. And it will execute the next line and it will execute the next line. And it will print. Why? Because we don't have break statement. If we have break statement, after we check this one, suppose CH is A, I will check this one. Is it correct? Yes. Then I will print because I have break. Then it will stop. Okay. You can try with the, the this one, for example. I will make a new example first. Yes. Uh, example zero three. Char C H equal to A. Okay. I have the C H equal to A, and then I want to check if it is A. Then I will print C H. If it is B, I will print B. If it is C, I will also print the C. So it will print only A. But if I don't have the print, let's put this comment. If I put this comment, it means I will not run this. So it will print three times. That's why we need to have 
the break statement to stop once we already have the result then we will stop let's just finish until this one uh, switch example zero one switch example zero one Let me copy and paste. And I will do this import. I need to get the user input. How many kids do you have? Let's assume that yeah, you already have a family. And then I need to input an integer value. And the integer value will be in the variable num. Switch num. If you have one kit, oh, you must be very happy. If you have two kits, perfect. If you have three kits, that's awesome. If you have four kits, you are powerful. What about if it is not one, two, three, four? Maybe it is more than four. If you put this one, how many kids do you have? Three. Then you will print that's awesome. If you print, uh, if you get five, then it will print wow. Okay. okay, I think I will stop here.